Everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, we're in the sunroom. We're gonna be adjusting our plants. Plants that we've been rooting uh, uh, indoors or started indoors, we're gonna be adjusting them to the outdoor conditions. This is a really delicate, important process of this whole thing. Just because we got our fig, our fig cutting to put out roots, to put out leaves, that is just not enough. We cannot say that's a success. We have to get it through the entirety of the winter. And now we have to get it through the spring because adjusting these guys to the outdoor conditions is, like I said, very delicate. We also have things in here like tomato plants. These are about two feet tall. We started them in February. We also have uh, much smaller starts here like artichokes, melons, zucchini, peppers, you name it. So the same principles can kind of be applied for anything that we're bringing outside. We're gonna be bringing outside also some peppers that we had overwintered. We dug them up from the bed here last year, brought them inside. We need to adjust those. We also brought in our citrus trees. We have to adjust those. But the main thing I think I want to touch on here is the figs because the figs, we're going to be, ha we have a lot of them as you can clearly see. <clears throat> and what this means for you guys is that we are going to be selling quite a bit of these. Uh, that was really the whole goal was to get a nice little production of these trees to eventually sell to you guys. There's a lot of demand. A lot of you guys have requests and, um, I don't really want to be taking requests, so whatever is available though, on FigBid, which is in the description, there's a link to that in the description, on to our FigBid page, whatever is available will be on FigBid. I'm not taking personal requests, it's just too much to deal with. I already have a lot of you guys asking me questions as it is, so I'm trying to make this a bit easier on myself. Also, for tax purposes, it just makes more sense to have everything on FigBit. But if you're interested in buying any of these varieties that we have, it's all going to be there. Um, but the whole point about the figs and why we can kind of start selling them soon, I would say sometime around early May to mid-May, is that once we get these adjusted to the outdoor conditions, they're ready to go. But getting that to that process is a bit difficult and like I said, a very delicate process. So what we're looking for particularly on the fig cuttings is that these guys have really started to harden up. The wood, the new growth that's come out of here is really starting to harden up. And because it's hardened, if this were to die or this were to die, let's say, for whatever reason, something were to happen, we didn't water it, maybe it's too hot outside, we had a tornado that came in here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know but the point is if this were to die because the growth is hardened the roots are also hardened if the roots are hardened that's a really strong plant and this thing will be able to come back from a point somewhere along this growth that is hardened up so that's really the key I think is that if you guys are doing this for your own personal use say you're trading say you also are selling some plants do not sell a plant that hasn't had its growth completely hardened up or at least partially, I should say partially hardened up because that's really telling about these figs is that they're just not strong enough. They just are not. And to have something that's not hardened up, that has really thin green growth and to be able to sell that or ship that, that's just a huge mistake. Like this one right here, this is one of the few we have in here that has a lot of green growth. If something were to happen to this, it would certainly pretty much be dead. This whole node would be dead. I'd have to rely on this node here or maybe even this node here for it to leaf out. So because they're in here, <clears throat> excuse me guys, these plants are already on their way to being adjusted. These are the ones we've selected. We didn't take every single cutting out of the house or inside the house and put them in here. I was very selective, believe it or not, as to which of these are indeed ready to be put out here. And you can see one of the big issues in adjusting these guys to the outdoor conditions is very visible right here. This is called sunburn. And these leaves, these trees right here were the, the furthest along. They certainly are probably still the furthest along, but these guys have taken a beating. Because it was tax season, because I was very busy, 
We had set up a new area, a new growing area upstairs, as you guys maybe have seen that with the shelving. We put these in here with the new lighting and the lights were left on for an entire week all night. The lights never shut off. And as a result, these plants got sunburn and a lot of the leaves had fallen off. We're talking tons of leaves. This was a full dense canopy of leaves here on these varieties. So it's important that we adjust them slowly because if not, this is what's gonna happen. Now, it's not the end of the world, like I said, because these guys are all hardened up and you can already see that really not in that much length of time, they're already putting out new growth. So this is really important. I think it's overlooked. A little piece of information that's gonna go a long way for you guys is that make sure that growth is hardened up. All right, so then how are we gonna adjust these? Well, we've got them in here for about two days. Why do we have them in the sunroom for about two or three days? The point of this is that the sun's still coming in here and maybe it's not a whole lot right now because of the time of the day, but the sun comes in here plenty. Certainly on this side, on the west side, it'll be coming in here at that time of the day. But we're getting that sun as if these guys are in a window. Uh, because this is glass, because the sun is then diminished when it goes through this glass, this is a really nice way of getting them slightly adjusted to actual sunlight. So if you're not doing this, I would just recommend putting them in a window for a little bit. You don't have them in a window, you don't have a window, then find yourself an area outdoors because this is the next step where we're gonna put them in about two hours of light. And this is gonna be for about really the longest part of the whole thing, I think. The longer you can put them in about two or four hours of light, the better off I think you're gonna be. This is really important. And this area here, because of the, the grill here, really shades out this area. Also, by the time the sun gets somewhere around midday, maybe in the afternoon, it doesn't get over this part of the sunroom here, the roof of the sunroom. So you can really get in here and have an area that only gets about four hours. And because it's getting four hours, that's really not a whole lot of light to, to, uh, to fry them, to burn those leaves to a crisp. So it's really important to get this process and this step, I think, right. Because if you don't get them in here for a certain number of days, I really think you're gonna regret it. And then we slowly move them down the steps and I get them further acclimated. You can see this area here is also another area we could put them in. This is also getting maybe about four hours of light. We could also put them underneath the sunroom, which will completely prevent them from getting any sunlight. And you can see down in here, I'm already adjusting two trees as it is. We took these out of the greenhouse. And because I don't want them to get fried to a crisp, we're putting them in here sometime around midday. And this will keep them out of that sunlight just long enough to get them adjusted to the next step, which is about six hours of light. Once you get six hours of light for a couple days, you put them out here in eight hours of light. And finally, if they're adjusted to eight hours of light, they're pretty much adjusted to most of the outdoor sunlight conditions that you're gonna get. Um, also, keep them, in a way, keep them in an area, especially if they're tender vegetables, put them somewhere that's protected out of the wind. Um, you know, I also want to mention the simple fact that a lot of you guys are going to be starting outdoor rooting. And I'm going to touch on this, I think, a lot more, but essentially what you could do, let's pretend these are cuttings that we're rooting outdoors. This is going to give you, I think, some insight on what we just talked about, by the way, but let's say we just started these, even though these are all air layers, you can see they're all leafing out now, but Let's say we had them here and we just stuck some, um, some sticks here, some cuttings into the soil. We need to pay attention very closely to the environment that we're rooting them in because this is a whole very different environment than rooting them indoors with a different set of requirements. So if we're not doing this again carefully in this process as well, we're gonna have lots of desiccation, we're gonna have lots of failures, we're probably gonna have lots of rot um, I would say that a cutting like this, because the soil is not really, there's not that much soil in here, you may have to come in here at a certain time of the year when the heat's really kicking 
and you're gonna have to water these almost every day. And watering them almost every day is really not good because all that rot, all that moisture on those roots is gonna call them, cause them to have root rot. So it's really important to then put them in a shadier location. And I would also use mulch. Um, definitely root them in an area that has about 70% shade. I think that's pretty much a good number. My friend Danny in New York City, he does it really well. He has a nice little environment, a little box that he set up for them. I would also recommend, here's a little different tip, is that if you have really thick cuttings, um, cuttings that are a bit fresh, you know, the cuttings that I'm talking about that we're rooting outdoors, which a lot of you guys are gonna be fixated on for some reason, you guys are doing this um, probably with cuttings that are very old, maybe from December, maybe from the fall. If we have really fresh cuttings that are very thick from older wood, we can certainly stick this growth directly in the soil. And this will root out just fine. We did this last year. There's videos on this. It's called the old man Italian style way of planting fig trees or propagating fig trees. I'm not entirely sure what the name of that video is, but you can see with all these trees that we had just planted, we trimmed them all back all the way to the base. This is just a better way to train them in my opinion because they're gonna turn into bushes anyway. So we took that excess growth of what was above, you score the bottom of the, the bark here on the bottom of the cutting, bury as much of it as you can. And if you got a thick cutting that's of older wood, it's certainly gonna have a high chance of rooting. Here's a really good example of something that might not work. This was a, a younger shoot that didn't harden up in time that's gonna be really blasted and have a lot bigger shot of desiccating. Whereas something like this, which is much thicker, stronger, healthier, this is probably not gonna desiccate at all and I'm gonna have no issues getting these varieties here to propagate. So that's really the key with the outdoor rooting is to pay attention to those requirements. Um, it's really quite different and it's the same thing when we bring them from inside to bring them to outside, we wanna kinda of mimic those conditions. Shadier location, something that's really not getting blasted all day by the sun. Um, yeah, we do want these little trees to grow and without that heat and that sunlight, it's gonna be a bit slower, but I'm telling you, man, freshly rooted cuttings, put them outdoors in the wrong environment, um, and you try to do that really quickly, you're gonna have a lot of failures in that little bash that you do. So that's kind of the video here, guys, is that we're just adjusting them. We're gonna show you guys more, I think, as we go along. Um, I certainly wanna talk more, I think, about outdoor rooting. Maybe we'll even do some ourselves if we have any left over, I'm not sure. It's very unlikely because I'm telling you, there's a lot of conditions, there's a lot of steps you gotta to go to to kind of get these things adjusted. Um, or get them in an environment that's going to be suitable to outdoor rooting. So anyway, that is sort of it, guys. You can see all the plants in here. Maybe you can see them, I don't know. <laughs> but that's what we've got going on right now. So we're just adjusting all this stuff to these outdoor conditions. All right, everyone, take care and I'll catch you all soon. See you for tomorrow's video.